Hello, how to travel in a journey with Alexandra and Uli here to entertain you today on the thought of how can you have an effective disagreement or say an enlightened no. Now, what is a effective disagreement in your eyes? No. no. Uh, it's something that I ha had and still have to learn to... Uh, say really no to things that you suggest and I'm not on track with that mm. because I am as we had it I am I try to to please I try to support and so sometimes to say no is not so easy for me but every time I do it I really do it from the heart then it feels like such a blessing and not only for me, I also have the feeling it's so good for you too. Yeah, absolutely. We talked about this thing about, you know, when we all have different strengths and particular for somebody who maybe runs a little bit the show at home like I do. <laughs> it's uh, super important and I love it if I'm showing where I need to grow, where I am seeing things wrong and um, so this is also a way for me to have an effective disagreement. And how can you be effective in disagreeing? I think that's more the key to um, this conversation that people are looking for. How can that be effective? It can be effective. Um, I can only talk for me because I'm one man and I live this one life. So I have my own personal experiences and my own personal setup with which I enter this world. And to speak it out, to speak it out clearly is um, is not easy, but um, it's the thing I I learn and I grow with. Yeah. We had it two days ago, three days ago. We had a effective no from my side oh. that will not maybe not be a, a no forever, but that in that moment felt completely felt completely right. Mm. And. As I said before, it cleared the atmosphere between us. And also, you have to know how I tick. And you have to know how, uh, where are my borders and what are my interests and what is my privacy. And if I don't speak it out, you, you ride a horse that you don't know and I ride a horse that I don't know. Mm. So speak it out. But speak it yeah. out carefully mm. also. And this is where the enlightenment part comes in for me. Um, this word, an enlightened no, is from the author of The Big Leap, um, Gay Hendricks. And he talks about how we can thrive in this world. And I think we want to talk about how we can thrive in a relationship and grow with each other. That's why we choose relationships and, you know, a particular couple setups. Um, because in friendships, we we can always escape a little bit more. That's my sense. But in when you are in a relationship, in a sexual relationship, in a close relationship, marriage or a confirmed relationship, you do need to extend into areas, into dark spaces that you have not seeking and so thriving here means that you become more and more aware of where things are ineffective for the common goal and that's what gay hendrick describes in towards your own growth so in a relationship you are you and you're working on your growth but together when we pull together we also have a bigger goal together and that's always very clear to the two of us we came together not only to support each other but feeling that if we combine our strength we will um, serve more to society to people around us and uh, serving is as necessary as being being who we are and when we do say an enlightened no it means like to make a conscious decision on this is not bringing us forward for example we did an enlightened no together the other day to me it was an enlightened no we are searching for house and grounds where we can expand our own lives and our community living and 
when we noticed that the house that we've been look, looking at um, was too far away from where we currently are and this house need extensive repairs, it was an enlightened no to me to say like, yes, this might be an opportunity, but it's not really the goal we have. It doesn't really align with where we want to be in the next two years. Uh, it'll kind of drain our resources it, on all levels and uh, time resources, you know, caring for each other, ripping this entity that we're carefully building. Uh, that is our family and that is expanding and contracting all the time, new pets, new, new kids or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, that is enlightened no to me, to be aware that a no serves everybody around us more and that there there's other people that might benefit from that house, for example, better than we might do. Hmm. Right, and um, it gets a little bit complicated when um, we had the situation also <clears throat> some, time ago, some time ago when you wanted me to join a certain project. Mm -hmm that i was not i was not really interested in mm -hmm. at that point of my time at that and you for you it was very important that i joined you in this mm. and so i sat with myself and i thought what is what is now more important is it more important to go with her this way that is in the moment not my way or is it more important to to say no here mm. at that point and then I said no, and the result was that I felt very, very confident and good with it. Mm. And so this no was right in this in this moment. And it was an enlightened no, because it just felt tremendously good. And not from a point of I've done it now for myself, but I've done something right here. For mm -hmm. me. And also in the end, right for our relationship, because you know then how I tick and yeah. what is very important for me. Mm. And so you can also react accordingly. Mm. It was good for me, it was good for you, it was good for, for the couple bubble. Yeah, it's about if you wonder what makes no enlightened, uh, to me it is to be present, not in the argument, but to be present in your own awareness of where you are in your life. And that means like you, have to discard thinking. Thinking is overrated. And I think what you're saying, Uli, when describing here is that when you discard the thinking and even kind of feel into yourself and there is such a loud no, then it's definitely enlightened. And we can often find that that people accept these things we, we all accept these things uh, you were saying, you know, like when you say that to me, it feels good to me as well. It's like saying to your child that knows no boundaries, you know, like um, you can't do this and it feels good. It's saying to your dog, no, you can't do that. I take you on the lead. It feels good to the dog, you know, and it feels good to us to experience these boundaries in those and um, they come with inner care. They come with inner love and awareness. And love is like that. It's correcting. It isn't always a cloud nine and sunshine and good days. Yeah, yeah you have to really separate between opinions here and deep rooted um, wishes for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you, uh, you should go out of this place of opinionation and should really feel yourself mm. deeply. And yeah. We had it before to be to be absolutely present with yourself and go beyond thoughts mm. and just dig deep in, in yourself. What is what is there? What is coming up? It's, then it comes very easily. Mm. It comes. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. I didn't I didn't thought about, I didn't think about it. I had no opinion about I have no opinion about this. But this is really my my inner truth. This is my value. Mm. This is what is really important for me. Yeah. And then to say no. <laughs> and we're gonna say no now to continuing this conversation <laughs> and we say yes to lunch <laughs> and we say yes to lunch mm. well thank you so much for tuning in once more dear listener and see you in the next show Mwah.